Hey guys, Cliff Perch here for BassResource.com today. We're talking a little bit about the drop shot and specifically fishing a drop shot in the spring. So uh, the drop shot technique, really it's a good year round technique because it, it works well deep, works well shallow, uh, you know, around cover, around, you know, offshore breaks, all kinds of things and all kinds of situations, even some suspended fish. But specifically, we're going to talk about fishing shallow and in the spring we've got uh, you know, like a pre-spawn period, a spawn period, a post-spawn. So obviously there, there is a movement of fish from, from offshore or deep up to shallow and then back out. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about shallow. So what I like about the drop shot is I can fish a specific target. And a lot of times in the spring, you know, a fish is going to spawn up near a, a, a log, uh, uh, a clump of pads or grass, some type of cover, a dock pole. Uh, uh, seawall, things like that. And what this does, I can put it in that strike zone and impart action uh, in that same strike zone without pulling it out of the strike zone. So that's kind of the beauty of a drop shot. Um, you know, if you've got a jerk bait, you've got to throw it in there, jerk it, reel it, wind it, and in, in order to impart action, it comes into the strike zone and leaves the strike zone. Same with a crank bait, a spinner bait, a chatter bait, anything like that. So the beauty of a drop shot is it targets that strike zone and gives action, but it never leaves. So it just, if they're pressured fish or if they're slow to bite, a lot of times it's a good way to get that tricky bite. You know, they're there and they, they won't chase something, but they will get tired of this thing being there. So um, again, lots of folks know about the drop shot, but I'll just go through the whole rig itself. Um, basically what I wanna do is suspend a worm up off the bottom, I've got a little bit, a little uh, big bite sensation cliffhanger worm here, and, and I really like a straight tail worm. Uh, I, I don't really use a curly tail worm much, you know, that, that's a little bit more for action and things like that. So I, I really like just a, a real mild little finesse straight tail worm, and uh, I've got a little light drop shot weight. This is quarter ounce, and I've got it on a spinning reel. You can also use heavier tackle in heavier cover, you know, with a bait caster, heavier weight, heavier line, all that. But basically, I've taken, uh, tied my hook on, and uh, I've left a, about a 12 to 14 inch tag line, and then uh, take my, I take, once I've tied it on, I take that tag line, I run the tag line down through the top of the hook, and what it does is it's, it puts that hook upright so when you're setting the hook you're always setting it towards the hook point you know it you'll still catch some fish if it's not rigged that way or if it's upside down but you're going to get a lot better hookup ratio and, and landing ratio if you have that hook point up and uh, you know that's that hooking them in the top of the mouth is also a better place to hook a bass so um, it, that's why I do that and it also stands that worm out just a little bit so uh, and, and the the nature of this little sensation uh, big bite bait sensation cliffhanger worm. It's 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 like a, a real soft light hand for so it's it's not heavy. It's fairly buoyant, and it will it will set there. You know I can I can let off and slack off, and it will sink a little bit because of the weight of the hook. But in general, I want it to be really really natural and suspending and uh, move as the current or as as the water moves a little bit. So it looks real natural. That's why I typically want to lean towards a little lighter line. They're going to get a long look at it. They're going to see it really good. So the lightest line I can get away with for the cover and the size of fish I'm dealing with, you know, the lighter the better. Um, I, I, I've drop shotted them on heavy line, like 15 or even 20. But if, if you've got somewhat uh, clear water and you can handle it with a cover, I, I'm going to lean towards a, a spinning setup more often with lighter line and, and a spinning spinning rod and uh, a spinning reel setup handles light line better. It's got a susp uh, superior drag system to a bait caster. So that's why I would lean towards this. And most of the time I am using light line. And uh, again, again, I've, I've taken, uh, I've taken this, this tag line now, it's about 12 to 14 inches. And uh, I've got a quarter ounce weight here. You can vary your weight, but I, I keep it pretty simple on light line. I'm, I'm right around quarter a lot of times, unless I've got heavier current or, or heavy, you know, fishing deep or a lot of wind or something like that. But most of the time I'm, I'm just with like a little quarter ounce and uh, 12, 14 inches. And that basically is gonna put it right in that strike zone. So I'm gonna pick a target and especially in the spring, since we're talking specifically about spring fishing, I'm gonna pick a target I've got a little dock pole over there. I'm gonna let it fall basically by it, and it's shallow there. So I'm already on the bottom. 
I've got, I've got the, the line in my finger so I can feel that, you know, have that, have that sensitivity there. And I'm going to let it go to the bottom and I'm just going to kill it there. I want that drop shot weight to act like an anchor and it suspends that bait there. So then I'm going to, I'm going to have it on a semi slack line. You don't want a whole bunch of slack because you can't feel or tell what's going on there. And you don't want it real tight because when you, when they bite it, you want them to take it in. So it's just a, a semi bow in my line, a semi slack line. I give it just a little bit of action and, uh, you know, I might shake it a little bit. I might kill it and let it slowly fall. Um, again, you've got the weight of that hook on there to let it fall a little bit, and it's a very buoyant worm. You know, the the it's like a little soft hand for it's really really soft. And and as far as my hook goes, I want a nice uh, light wire worm uh, worm hook. So I, I don't want to overpower the worm with a heavy hook. You know, for one, I've got a soft rod. This is a Phoenix K2. I, I like a little longer one. Some guys are in the six nine range. This is a seven six. And so it's like, a, it's like a medium action or pretty soft tip uh, because I'm using light line and I want them to be able to take it in. But also because of that hook I'm talking about, it's a light wire hook and um, I don't want to bend that open. You know what I mean? So it's, it, it, the hook needs to not overpower the worm or the line and the rod. So it's all a pretty good match and uh, that's why I want a light wire hook. Uh, again, I'm not going to have a ton of hook setting power with a soft rod like that, you know, and when I do set the hook, I'm going to, I'll toss back over there, uh, when I set the hook or I know there's one swimming off with it, you feel, a lot of times, you, you may feel a tick, but it might just get heavy. You might feel pressure, feel your line swimming off, and, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to reel to get, get tension on it, and then I'm going to bow up and just keep pressure. And again, you, you know, you want your drag soft be able to handle the fish on that light line and that's why that spinning reel really comes in handy. So uh, that's my drop shot technique. Um, again, it's, it's a great year round technique. In the spring, I'm targeting shallow targets and a lot of times those are visible targets. So, so uh, I'm looking at, uh, especially right here, I've got some shallow dock poles, some docks. You know, I know those bass are gonna be spawning in you know, one to four or five feet, depending on the clarity. Out west, you might, you might have gin clear water and, and they might spawn in 10 feet, but it's still a good technique for that. So I'm going to pick a, a tree, a brush pile, uh, lily pad stems, um, dock pole, any type of visible target I can see. And, and again, on your electronics, with the, with the electronics of forward looking technology now, a lot of times I'm seeing targets out there that aren't visible above the water. So it, it works the same for that. And it's actually uh, especially good with, with that uh, forward looking technology. Now I've got the active target from Lawrence on here that I use and, and, and uh, you're able to actually see those targets out there. I can fish that target and know that my bait has fallen right where it needs to be. And uh, again, it's not something I use to cover water. I don't really drag it around up in there much. I, I find a target, throw it in there, kill it, you know, fish it for a, a few seconds. It might be it might be five seconds. It might be ten to ten to twenty seconds. You know, I've I've seen where where if you feel good about one being there, or you may know one is there, it it may take a long time, but you know that your bait is still in that strike zone, and eventually, most of the time, they're just going to grab it and swim it off out of there. So, um, it's a great technique. Uh, really good for getting bites. A lot of bites. Um, it's good for, for getting pressured fish. If you get a lot of fishing pressure, it, you know, it's, it's a little more natural, it's more subtle, uh, gets a lot of bites. Uh, can it catch big ones? Yes, it's a great way to catch big ones. A lot of times, if I'm in an area that has a lot of big fish, well, the big goal then is just to get bites. I know I'm gonna get some of those big ones. If I have a, a specific spot that I know holds big fish, again, it's a good technique, but uh, in general, it's a really good bite getter, really good bite getter. So lots of action and uh, can catch big ones. I've caught up to uh, nine, 10 pounders on this and, and uh, just a little four and a half inch worm and putting it in that strike zone. You know, you've got a big female spawning up there or holding it tight on cover. Uh, they'll bite it, they'll bite it. So again, it's, it's mainly a clear water technique. So they're gonna get a really good look at it. But uh, you know, those are some things that uh, that I like about drop shotting and again works great 
year round, but those spring targets are, are gonna be really good places to pitch that drop shot worm.